This is the cover I got with this book. How disappointing is that? My pillow is more interesting than this cover, and it's a boring pillow. Hey there, cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Normally, for these booktube prize vlogs, I start off with something a little bit more formal, but you know what? We've made it all the way to the finals. And I feel like we know each other a little bit better now than we did at the beginning, yeah? And if this is your first time, don't worry. Um, I'll be explaining everything, but uh, we're just going to go for slightly more informal. And also it's gonna be a little shorter because I only have two books to read for the final round. I'm getting ahead of myself. The booktube prize is run by Robert over at Barter Hordes. It is literary prize run by booktube for booktube. And this year I have judged the nonfiction category straight through, which has been great because I have already read four of the finalists which is awesome. That is uh, Inferno by Catherine Cho, uh, The Dead Are Rising by Les Payne, which is biography of Malcolm X. Then we have After the Last Border by Jessica Goudeau, and a fourth one. Oh, Red Comet, which is about Sylvia, Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark. And some of those I did really well with. Some, well, Red Comet, namely, I didn't do as well with. It's well loved, but it, I'm, I'm, it's not for me. And I have two books left. They are Our Bodies, Their Battlefields, and Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. And at this point, I have started Our Bodies, Our Battlefields, which is all about rape being used as a weapon of war. So I had an inkling that this was going to be heavy, and it is. It is. It's hard to read at times, and I get verklempt and teary, but it's worth it. It's super interesting to me because a bunch of these conflicts I don't know as much about, especially the ones that happened in the 90s. I was a little bit too young to really get a grasp of everything going on. So it's a backdoor introduction of sorts to some of these conflicts, things like Rwanda. And the systematic use of rape by armies to humiliate and basically break people is horrific. One of the things I'm loving is she's letting the women tell their own story. She quotes them for paragraphs at a time, which is something that I've not found very much. And when I do, it's usually women telling women's stories. Um, and I don't think that's a coincidence. So yeah, it's not a book that you can say you enjoy. It's a book you learn from and we'll see what I think of it by the end. This is gonna be hard to rank. I mean, last round, the semifinals, was hard to rank. While I know that I'm probably gonna put Red Comet at the bottom, there's a lot of interesting stuff in the middle. So anyway, let's get into the vloggy stuff, shall we? Watching Koshien, which is the high school baseball tournament that's still going on this year. They're, they can't yell their che normal cheers. There's no fans. Only the brass band plays, but they're still doing their thing. And for someone, if you're used to watching Major League Baseball, the speed at which these pitchers work is something else. We are cheering for this team in blue because they're the underdogs, probably. The team from Osaka is usually a powerhouse that recruits from all over the country. She got not so much. I'm kind of proud of this spread I made, so I thought I would show you all but it's for the 21st of August through the 2nd of September. Below them are the days of the week in Japanese. And these are the books that I have on the go or would like to get on the go soon. So books from Mysteriously Read, I finished that on the first day. So that's a complete in Japanese and I cross off all the rest of the days. Our Bodies Are Battlefields, Unnatural Causes. Oh, and red is book two prize. Green, it's not really showing the green, is Buddy Read. And blue is arc and black is other. So I'm marking how much I read each day and ones where there's a planned schedule, like the buddy read, or I want to hit a target is here. And then I used a marker, like a highlighter, to mark the theoretical end of when I should have stuff read by. So we'll see how this fills in over the next um, 10 days or so. Oh, and so in lockdown, and this is kind of a personal lockdown because Japan doesn't do lockdowns, I don't have much stationary joy because the really good 100 yen store, which is like a dollar store, 
is far away and in a big mall and I'm definitely not going into a big mall unvaccinated with Delta going around. But my local Daiso had some neat stuff. This is their post-its, but they're designed to fold in half over papers. And the idea is, is that even if you have a clear folder, Japan loves these clear folders, and you want to keep things organized within there, you can still use these to split up papers on the inside. I've never seen anything like it before, so, and I don't honestly know if I have that much use for them, but you never know, and it was a buck. We take our joy where we can get it. So what do you know? It turns out I had a clear folder within a file folder of reference stuff for interpreting, when I get a patient and I'm not particularly familiar with what's going on, I end up printing out a lot of stuff and only half of it sticks. So I have three different, you can't even see. I think if it were a brighter color, it might show up better. And yeah, it's going to keep things together. I'm trying to do this left-handed, not going through. Um, yeah, it's going to keep things kind of more together. It's going to be easier to see them, but... I kind of thought that would stick. Hmm. I mean, you can just barely see it. The big thick part is about burns. There's way too much there, but... Meh. Mm. Mm. Meh. It's not a great feeling when you, as in me, ends up going back and looking at all the footage for this vlog, and while there's lots of great interstitial stuff, live stuff, I've only talked about the books once, and it was just Our Bodies, Our Battlefields. I didn't film anything about cast. I did read it kind of quickly, maybe that was part of it, and I took anemic notes. And I was just so excited to get my ranking in, and obviously I have that, that uh, I just put the whole thing out of my brain. So I am here at the end of September, very desperately trying to remember what I thought about these books. Lesson learned. My end thoughts for Our Bodies Are Battlefields are much like my midway thoughts. I learned about conflicts that I didn't know all that much about. It's horrific reading all of these firsthand experiences about rape and sexual assault in war and how it is used systematically and how more often than not it's lumped into other war crimes and that these women just want some justice and some recognition that they went through all of this awful stuff whether it's from the hague or any of these international tribunal thingies that come up more often than that because it's harder to prove rape than it is to prove say even just genocide in general particular heinous acts and so prosecutors shy away from it because they like we, we can definitely get them on the war crime so let's just go that and lump it in and that's not fair to these women and their struggle and everything they've been through and i should say it's not exclusively women and that's mentioned as well this made me think of how important it is that reporters are not all from the same mold because if it's just that american white guy war reporter going in they're only going to tell one kind of story but if you have women, if you have people from different parts of the world, different religions, different ethnicities, different everything, they're going to tell different stories of what's happening and how important it is for all of those stories to be told. The writing is good and it pulled me through even with a difficult subject matter and it's incredibly valuable. I'm so happy that this book exists but I have to think about how it fits with all the other books this round and this is stacked. These finals are just because I'm rating something low in the group doesn't mean it's a bad book. These are all amazing books, even though one of them didn't work for me. We'll get there. And it means that I've had to change my criteria. It can no longer be just like, well, a lot of these are four stars. How do you differentiate among them? And like I mentioned last round, I'm looking for books that are an accomplishment and transcend. And this book is an accomplishment, but it didn't transcend in the same way as some of the other books in this group. So very good if you're interested in the subject matter and you think you can handle it because it is tough, but um, middle of the pack. There's a cicada hanging out wherever this vent goes. I know it's on the outside, it's way too distant to be inside the vent. So I have some music in my kitchen. See kitchen. <laughs>
on your very last booktube prize book of the year and the thing you're knitting this is a sleep sack my sister-in-law is expecting um i got to the decreases so it's not mindless knitting anymore so i can't read while i knit ah the great thing about decreases is they go faster <laughs> the more you do them so sleep sack with little owls at the top here, this is a rolled edge. It'll all work better once it's washed, but done. Can't even get it all in. Ta-da! And the last book that I finished for this round of the Book 2 Prize and this year's worth of reading was Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. And her work has been talked up so much. She's been on my TBR forever. Her other book, uh, The Warmth of Other Suns, has been on my list forever. That one's about the Great Migration. This one is about race in America through a different lens. And this is what I like about it is because when we talk in America about, you know, the black experience and what white black relations and all of that, we come to it with a lot of emotional baggage, with a lot of preconceived knowledge that can be hard to break down but she's looking at it through this notion of caste of a marginalized caste of a lower class caste and the higher caste americans i think that reframing serves its purpose and is done well i like how she brings in some personal stories and to illustrate points more than being you know chunk a chunk of this being a memoir necessarily it shows real lived experience and what this idea of caste can mean for actual people. One thing I didn't like as much is some of her metaphors were overwrought a bit longer than they needed to be, I think. Some of them were incredibly enlightening, but especially in the first half or so, I was like, oh, you're really gonna take it that far, honestly? I had a great experience reading this book. It read quickly. I took all kinds of highlights. There are insights in here that I appreciated, super interesting. At the same time, unfortunately, it hasn't really stuck with me. And this isn't in my ranking because I ranked the whole set right after I finished this. Then again, it doesn't change my ranking. It just opens up a little bit of sunlight between two books that didn't have as much before. And what is that ranking? So at number six is Red Comet, which is no surprise if you saw my previous vlog. This book was just not for me. It's a lot about Sylvia Plath, and I think she's an incredibly interesting, important figure, but it's a thousand pages, and it's not... I did not need this kind of depth. I did not need this kind of look into minutiae of her life, going into analysis of bunches of her poetry, assuming... I feel like the book assumed I knew something about her when I knew next to nothing. And I, will, I, def I remember parts of this, but um, it wasn't, it's not, and I don't care for biography much anyway, so this wasn't for me. Number five is The Last Border by Jessica Goudeau, and this is very good narrative nonfiction, but I had a lot of nitpicks with it and things that I would have liked to be done differently and very complex, complex feelings. And if you go back to my blog about that, I explain it all in detail. And it's one of those books where if other people love it, love it, I understand and I totally get it. But all of those nitpicks, all of these issues and things, they bugged me and they still bug me. So I, I can't rate it super high, but it's, I think this was a three and a half star book. Like this is how packed this round is. Like number five, one that I'm hoping doesn't even get close to winning it is a three and a half star book. That's really good. Fourth is Our Bodies, Their Battlefields, because even it's solid writing. It's wonderful in so many ways. I'm so glad I learned from it. But like I said before, not transcendent. Number three is Cast, because it is well written. We have all of these interesting ideas. It made me think. I know when I go back and look at the highlights, I'll have whole bunches to ruminate over again. And I definitely want to read The Warmth of Other Suns. She's a great historian, but compared to these next two, again, it doesn't quite transcend and it's not the same, it's an accomplishment, but it's not the same kind of accomplishment as the top two books. In second place is Inferno by Catherine Cho. This is a medical memoir about her experience with postpartum psychosis, which normally happens right after you give birth, but for her, it was a month or two down the line while she was traveling in the US. She's from the US, but she lives in the UK now. So while she was traveling, she ended up having this experience and it is her first person visceral 
experience of doing this. And what's amazing about it and what makes it different from a lot of other medical memoirs is that, well, she's psychotic. She's had a break with reality. She has a hard time telling what's true and what's not. She sees like her demon's eyes in her son and she doesn't know how to parse it. And we are with her through that the entire way. And this is what the accomplishment of it is to make a memoir like that work and work so well. The fact that it is a medical memoir that doesn't get too much in the medical stuff. And I still love it as a person who loves medical stuff. And it gave me a perspective into illness that I didn't have, I couldn't have imagined myself having. And it's wonderful, absolutely wonderfully done. An accomplishment that transcends number two. And in first place, the book that has been in first place for me every round that I've had it, and I did get it in the very first round, I'm happy to see it made it to the end, is The Dead Are Arising by Les Payne and Tamara Payne, which is looking at the life of Malcolm X. And this is another book that maybe other people wouldn't rate it as high. And again, you're thinking, you just told me you hate biography. Why is this number one? But I read the autobiography of Malcolm X just last year, and this fills in all of the holes. It gives me all of the context that I wanted about the times that he was living in and other stuff going on. The research that went into this was incredible. It was headed up by Les Payne, but his daughter Tamara was there every single step of the way and took the book over the finish line after his death. It is a massive accomplishment that took, I believe, decades to put together, and it creates the picture of Malcolm X's life that I wanted and I needed and so incredibly well done and interesting to read. It, it did feel slightly long at times, but it was all worth it. Every single page was worth it to me. And that's why I ended up putting it yet again in number one. So that's my ranking for the nonfiction side of the finals of the Book Two Prize this year. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts about these books, if you would like to talk about how the rankings ended up going, like who the winners were, we can get about that in the comments down below. And I would love for you to consider being a judge yourself. You don't have to be a booktuber if you are a commenter, a part of this community, you are eligible. And Robert is expanding, hopefully next year, to a translated fiction section as well. And you don't have to make yourself obligated to do every single round. You can just start with the first round and see how things go from there if you want. And I, I love the experience. If you have any questions about that, I'll answer that down below. And yes, so thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.